This tutorial is brought to you by Squarespace, the best place to build a beautiful website. I haven't made a proper tutorial in a while, so I thought, let's make a proper tutorial. And this one, you're gonna learn how to do condensation for the outside of an object. So typically that's gonna be a can, or you could put it on a monkey, make some monkey sweat. But the whole point of this is it's gonna be entirely procedural driven by geometry nodes. So the setup that we are gonna make, this procedural condensation, you can take it and put it on any single object and more so, and this is the important part, because it's geometry nodes, because it's procedural, you can play with the parameters, get different looks, different size of the droplets, different connectivity, positioning, seed values, all uh, without it being actually that complicated. So if you're not that familiar with geometry nodes, or maybe you are, this is going to be a project accessible to everybody. And uh, let's make condensation because the, the weather's getting hot and people are getting sweaty. We are recording. This video is sponsored by Squarespace. What is Squarespace? Why should you care? What's it all about? Well, Squarespace is the best. It's the easiest way to make a website. You just pick a template, click and drag. You don't need to be a coder or a hacker. You don't need to break into, you just use the templates. I like it so much that I use it for my own website, www.cgmatter.com. And uh, here are some features that you might be psyched about. First of all, if you have any like social media accounts, like Twitter, whatever, uh, Squarespace lets you embed directly into your website the feed from that. Another one, of course, is analytics. Analytics is useful if you want to know who is going to your website, how many people that is. A basically kind of businessy, demographic-y <laughs> type of information. And if your website involves images, which almost surely it does, I can't imagine a website without images, uh, you will be so psyched to know that Squarespace has auto cropping, auto size. You can basically put your image wherever and Squarespace is gonna take care of it for you. So when you're ready to get serious and actually make your website, you can head over to Squarespace and make just the website without like launching it and making it public yet. You just use the trial. And when you're ready to launch, use my link in the description and save 10% on your first purchase of a website or domain. Thank you, Squarespace, for sponsoring. So before we start making this result, it is definitely a good idea for me to describe what it is that we're gonna be making. So uh, in this tutorial, we're first of all gonna be modeling a can. We're not downloading any model, we're making it ourselves. And then we're gonna be making this geometry nodes group that makes the droplets. As you can see, there's a whole bunch of chaos going on here. So. Uh, what controls is this going to let us have? Because again, it's completely procedural. Uh, well, right off the fly, we can just change the seed value and just get different uh, droplet distributions. This is probably easier to see in solid view. You can see as I do this, we just get free uh, different distributions, right? We don't need to put in any more work. Uh, we can also control the density, and that's going to be both for the big and the small droplets. And we're going to talk about that. You're going to see some of these are spheres. Some of them are distorted. There's a lot going on here. Uh, we have the density and then you're also going to notice finally that the droplets are not showing up on the top and the bottom if you can see uh, that's intentional and that can be controlled by this uh, group right here where uh, if i change something about this group right so if i say oh this face assign it to the group um, now we're going to have condensation up here too so you can say uh, where you do and do not want uh, condensation so let's begin I'm going to be using a fresh version of Blender 3.2 Alpha. You could use whatever you want. So uh, first things first, modeling a can. Again, we're not going to be using somebody else's can. Uh, here's how you do it. It's super simple. In fact, um, what I would recommend is you just find an image of a soda can. It can have labels on it or not. I just found this one because it's nice and simple. And the idea is we're going to use this to kind of trace out our model. So I downloaded that image. And then back in Blender, uh, what we can do is go to Image, go to reference, and then if you select that image, that can be our reference and we can literally model this. How do we model it? Shift A, add a cylinder, because this is a, that's an icosphere, uh, because this is a cylindrical object, and then in wireframe, uh, we can trace this. So modeling is super simple. In edit mode, all we have to do is first of all, scale it up to roughly the size of the can. Uh, you can see this image is a bit misaligned, so I'm just gonna move it a bit on the Y axis until it's like flush with our model. And then uh, here's the process for modeling. First of all, scale this up. And the only operations we're going to be using is we're going to use E to extrude. And then after we extrude, S to scale, right? So E to extrude, S to scale. And uh, the nice thing about this is since this is cylindrical and we're in wireframe, we're just basically taking circular cross sections and uh, doing that. So let me guide you a bit more. Again, E to extrude. This time we're going to go all the way up to the top and then S to scale if you need it. Here we just need to reposition this, E to extrude, S to scale. So I'm just gonna fast forward at this point. 
Okay, so I think this is kind of like the essence of it. Um, now all we have to do is make it look good, because if we go to solid view, it looks like uh, garbage. So uh, first of all, smoothing, hit control and one, and that is gonna add a subdivision surface modifier. You could either do it like that or manually add in a subdivision surface modifier um, of level one. If it was control two, it would have done level two. As you can see, uh, whatever. So you can see we've smoothed this. We have smoothed this out, but it kind of looks horrible, and it doesn't have any of the form. Uh, this is because it's kind of smoothing a bit too much. So we can actually add a bit of control. So back in wireframe, uh, you can see that uh, right here, this uh, curve over here. We want it to be kind of a tight curve, not this uh, super smooth thing. So we can control this by uh, selecting this loop, um, alt clicking, and then beveling with control B. And you can see just by adding these uh, supporting loops is what we call them in the industry, uh, we're going to get some of that form back. So before and then after. And then definitely, I also want it down here. So I'm just telling uh, Blender basically, don't subsurf as much. And we can also do it uh, down here, by the way. So on the lips, you just bevel. And this is super important if you want to maintain the form again. So just pick any loop that you feel like isn't uh, uh, contoured enough and we are just going to bevel it. So this one could use a bit of bevel, and already uh, we're getting something that has a bit more form. Um, next, uh, let's just add in the details, of course, like the uh, lip here, um, and to do that, um, well, it looks like we've already made a loop cut that's high enough. Uh, what we need to do is actually say, add a lip here. So I'm gonna use Control R to add a loop cut right there, and then for the selection, so again, this uh, top ring, uh, we just need to extrude it outward. So hit not E to extrude, because it's going to do this weird thing. Hit Alt E, which is going to let us pick the type of extrusion, extrude faces along normals. And now you can see uh, we, we have that. So it's probably easier to see without this. Uh, we've extruded it like that. Add the subsurf. Again, uh, it looks a little too, um, you know, uh, smoothed out. So first of all, let me kind of rescale this. Um, and second of all, again, you just take these uh, loops that you want you want tightened and bevel them a little. So you can see this has added quite a bit of form. Uh, finally, let's do some uh, simple stuff. Disable this, and so I swear we're going to do condensation soon. I just want to make sure uh, that you have a working can. Uh, I'm just going to inset this. I'm going to extrude it downwards just to create a uh, the surface on the top. We're not going to be doing the tab. You can model that yourself, but it's not too important for this. Uh, we're going to extrude it downwards, and you're going to see when we add the subsurf, uh, for sure this time it's uh, too smooth. So the trick uh, to add more uh, shape to this is you hit I to inset, and this is going to add a supporting loop. So you can see that looks uh, pretty good. In fact, uh, let me just do one more round of this. So I'm going to inset, extrude downwards, inset. I don't think this is exactly what a can looks like, but I'm, I'm, I'm down with it. So uh, you could even bring this up to a second uh, su subdivision surface level just to see what it looks like. Super smoothed out. Um, and this is the time, if you haven't already, by the way, inside here. Um, if you haven't already, uh, just make sure you're, you're happy with the shape. And I think I am. So we can get rid of this reference. And boom, we have our can. Next order of business is we need this to have kind of a metallic material so that when we add the droplets, we could see this water on a metal surface and it looks good. So this is basically adding a material and some render settings. So what are we gonna do here? Well, first of all, uh, for the can, select it, make a material. I'm gonna call it can. And uh, the material is super simple. Is it metallic? Yes, so make it a metal. And by the way, it's gonna look garbage to begin with. We're gonna fix it. Uh, so first of all, make it metallic. Second of all, take the roughness, bring it down. This makes it uh, shinier. Of course, it doesn't have much to reflect other than the, the slight source, so let's fix that. I'm gonna get rid of the light source. For the render engine, I'm gonna use cycles because it looks better. And then the idea here is we're gonna add an HDRI. You can download these from HDRI Haven, they're free. Uh, they're photospheres that we can add in, and this will not only add lighting, but stuff for the metal to reflect. So I have an HDRI folder. This is an HDRI I particularly like. And now you can see this is looking much more like a metal can because it's actually got stuff to uh, reflect in all this. By the way, film transparent gets rid of the um, HDRI for viewing. Uh, final thing I want to do is just kind of hone in this material. Again, we're not going for the simple stuff. I want it to be easy, accessible, but I want it to look very good, right? Um, so on top of just making it metallic and low roughness, uh, we could add some details, kind of like surface imperfections. Maybe there's fingerprints, some areas are dustier, stuff like that. A good way to simulate that is for the roughness, how shiny it is. Uh, I don't want it to be the same everywhere. So I'm going to use a noise texture. Noise texture is going to give us this black and white map, mask, 
whatever you call it, I don't care. And uh, we could say, have some areas be one roughness, some areas be another. Um, particularly, I want to use object coordinates for this so we don't get that weird uh, stretching. And that's a result of us um, in edit mode uh, doing some like uh, scaling stuff. But uh, I'm going to use object coordinates. And then just to tighten up this thing, I'm just going to use a color ramp. Again, I'm just creating a thing that says, make it rough here, make it less rough here. I'm going to make it high contrast. And then the key to this, what's going to make this look uh, super good, is you want to add detail. So you can see that adds some granularity. But the most important part, take the roughness and bring it very close to one. And you can see that kind of diffuses and makes it more gritty and scattered. Uh, this is what's going to make it look uh, super good in just a moment. So uh, for the color ramp, basically these are the two colors that are going to determine the roughness. Uh, for the first one, I don't want it to be black because that just means value 0 be perfectly reflective. That's a bit much. Let's have it be 0.1, 10% reflective in some sense. And the other handle, we could have it be like uh, just a bit rougher in those areas. So something like 0.14. So we went from 0.1 to 0.14. So you can see it's kind of like a low contrast thing. Take this, connect it to the roughness. So now instead of some number, we have this mask. And let's see what this looks like. Might be a little hard to tell until we uh, hone it in. Hopefully YouTube compression doesn't destroy this, but you could see there's a bit of difference going on here. If I wanted to make it more visible, uh, you could see this is what it's doing, but I'm gonna make it less intense. I'm just gonna tighten that up. And it, it, it's a small detail, but it's gonna make it look better. And uh, to punctuate this, and soon, 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 we're going to do condensation. Uh, send this through a bump node as well, because we could get free normal mapping out of this. So you can see, here's our uh, normal map that we're generating from the color ramp, connected to normal, and now, <laughs> now our can looks battered. Uh, take the strength, bring it down so it's not as intense. Also bring down the distance, and maybe even bring down the strength even more. So now uh, the areas that are a bit rougher also correspond with areas where the can's a little dented, uh, which makes sense because they would kind of accumulate dust um, in this uh, fashion. Um, so there, there is other stuff we could do to this for sure. Um, but I think for now, this is a, a good looking can and we are ready uh, to add condensation now that we have our nice can material. Okay, so I'm over in the geometry nodes workspace and the rest of this is going to be heavy noting. Well, not heavy, it's not going to be too hard, but it's going to be noting and it's going to be this idea of making a kind of a distribution system uh, that makes these droplets that we call condensation. So um, in geometry nodes, select the can mesh again. If we were to go to rendered mode, we don't need to, uh, but you can see it has this nice material. Uh, you want to select the can and add a geometry nodes thing. What that's going to do is it's going to add a modifier that again, geometry nodes is a modifier and we're just going to make the instructions for it. Um, the fact that this is coming after a subdivision surface is no problem. Um, in fact, this is probably a good way to work because then we can uh, go back and forth on the uh, detail levels. So in geometry nodes, what do we need to do? Let's make a, a distribution system that says at these areas, add in droplets. Well. Uh, there's a lot of ways to do this, but definitely the fastest and most primitive, and it's easy and it looks good, is you want to use a distribute points on surface node. This is going to distribute points on the faces of our mesh. Connect it. You can see, now we have points. We can control the density, and the seed gives us different distributions. Now, the way I want you to think about this is each one of these dots, points, whatever, is going to get a droplet. Um, you could, you could leave it like this if you want it to be a bit fancier. You could use something called Poisson disk distribution. The only difference is it's going to make sure that there's no two points like on top of each other, like droplets intersecting. Um, I don't think it matters, and I don't think anybody's going to notice, so keep it on random. So for each one of these points, we want a droplet. So let's generate those droplets. We want to instance copy a droplet on each one of those points. So let's instance on points like that. Two things we need. One is the points, which we've connected. So we've generated points. We're saying instance on these points. And second of all, what is it that we're going to copy or instance? Well, what we could do is add in just something primitive. We'll make it look a bit better. And by primitive, I mean that literally because we're going to use the UV sphere primitive mesh. So what this is doing is we have a sphere uh, that is described by some parameters. And this is being copied on every single one of our points. Uh, take the radius, bring it down, down, down so that each uh, instance has a correspondingly small radius. And uh, this is the beginning of our thing. It looks horrible. It does. Uh, but that's where the work we're going to put in uh, matters. Um, so a couple of things to immediately get better looking results. Uh, these droplets, since they're kind of on the can and kind of weighed down by gravity almost, 
is, is the way I think about it. Uh, let's take the sphere and scale it up. So again, I'm just taking our original sphere and modifying it, and that's what's getting copied. Let's take it and add a bit of sag or scale on the z-axis. This is going to make them more like ellipsoids or kind of like three-dimensional ovals, because again, they're being weighed down by gravity, which I think looks more accurate, and we'll get it to look good. Another thing we could do to quickly get a bit more realism is not every droplet's going to be the same size. So let's use a randomization to say, uh, for this droplet, make it this size, for this one another. Use a random value node for this. Random value can drive anything. Uh, in particular, I want it to drive the uh, scale here. So take it, connect it to scale. And uh, notice I'm not using vector or anything like this. I'm just using a number, uh, a one single one-dimensional number. So x, y, and z are scaled uniformly. And you can see uh, we have some uh, randomization here. Now, some of these are going to go as low as 1. Some of them are going to stay at 1. So the original 100% scale. I don't want these to like scale down to zero, so let's say it could be as small as 50%. Okay? Um, so already it's looking a lot better than before, uh, but if you are kind of paying attention and uh, you take this and you, you join it with the original mesh, so I'm just joining this with the original geometry, so one's kind of on top of the other, you're going to notice a big issue. The droplets are all kind of facing up. <laughs> even when the can's curving this way. And that's not how condensation works. It should curve with the can. So that, that's one issue we should fix. Super simple. Um, if you think about it, this is a rotation issue. We need to say, oh, some spheres are rotated one way, some of them another. And uh, the issue is it changes where it is on the surface. Luckily for us, this distribute points on faces comes with both a normal and a uh, rotation output. So these points that are being distributed, they come with uh, normal information. The way you fix this is you just take rotation, not the normal, but you take the rotation, you connect it here, which almost does the right thing, but now they're all pointing out perpendicular to the surface. And all we need to do is just modify this rotation a little bit. So we take this vector, we're going to do some vector math, and we're just going to add a bit of rotation on the x. This happens to be the exact number, it happens to be pi over 2. If you don't know why, it's not a big deal, but what it ends up meaning is this is almost saying um, rotate it by 90 degrees. Pi over 2 is a radians thing, but we're saying rotate it by 90 degrees. So it's not perpendicular, but now it's tangent to the surface. And you can see uh, this fixes the issue. Now it's flowing with it. But now uh, this presents another issue now that we have all these droplets. I don't think I want them on the bottom. I also don't think I want them on the top. Maybe the top does make sense, but I definitely don't want them on the bottom or anything like that. So... We need to somehow say distribute stuff here, but not here. It's almost like we want to take the density, how much there is, and say make it zero in some areas. We can do that super simply. Uh, this is what the selection is for. So what we're going to do is we're going to use a custom selection. So in this group input, basically group input is what we're bringing into GeoNodes. So I brought in the original geometry, the can we made. I'm also going to make a custom parameter, connect it to the selection. And you can see uh, now in this modifier, we have an option to say, uh, make the selection zero. In other words, make it nowhere. Or one, make it everywhere. In other words, I can now put something in here. It goes into the modifier and says where to distribute it on faces. Well, I don't want it to be zero or one, right? I want it to be zero on the top and the bottom and one on the kind of the, the, the frame <laughs> of the can. Well, how do we do that? Well, we need to make a uh, custom uh, group for this. So in the can options, I'm going to go to the object properties create a vertex group. In, uh, in other words, we're going to say, I'm going to color a map that says these ver ver vertices are good, you know, put dots on them, and uh, these ones are not. So uh, create a group. I'm going to call this uh, selection, just to be clear. And uh, to actually do this, uh, I recommend going in wireframe. Just go to edit mode. You can see right now with our selection, if we click um, select, nothing happens because I'm saying select our selection but we haven't defined what that is yet. So what we need to do is define it. And maybe it's easier to just hide geometry nodes for now. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna select the areas like explicitly in edit mode where I want the things to be. So you could have it be on the bottom or not the bottom, whatever. And then for our selection, just click assign. So again, we've selected some stuff and we've loaded it into the selection group. Meaning now if I deselect everything and select uh, our selection and click select, it already knows what's in there. What's the point of this? The point of this is um, a vertex group is a data type uh, that can be brought directly into geometry nodes. So instead of putting 0 or 1 or some other number, click this, num uh, this button, which is going to let us put in a uh, group or a selection of some kind, and load in the selection. It it's called that because that's what we called it.
There we go. And now you can see uh, we've sent this data through here into the distribute points on faces, and it's not going to be on the top or the bottom unless, unless we go back here. And I say, oh, I actually want this face, assign it, and now it's going to be there too. Okay? There you go. And everything else follows. No nothing has changed, right? We can always change the seed. It's still going to be constrained to that area. We can change the density, all that. So that's all the same. Beautiful, beautiful. So we've uh, made a primitive thing. I think the next order of business is making these droplets not look, you know, so bad, right? They, they need to look like water where if you can almost imagine water on a car window, uh, they're not, they're, they're kind of broken up and distorted. Uh, in other words, we need to distort this. How do we do that? Well, um, basically, if you remember, here's our one sphere. We've instanced it onto points and I want to take this and distort it. So on this uh, instance to points, what we need to do is before we do any kind of distortion, um, it's important uh, to know, and this is kind of technical, if we look at what this is through the viewer, you can see it's just a bunch of instances, 316 things that we copied. That's not geometry. It's one sphere that we copied 316 times. What we need to do is turn it into geometry. Into geometry. So use a realize instances node. Again, to be clear, now when we view this, it's just a bunch of geometry data. There's no instances anymore. Whereas if we look uh, here, if we look uh, here, now we can see that there are instances. So realize instances realizes them into geometry. So now we can actually modify it. How do we want to modify it? Well, I want to distort the position of the points. The way we do that is if I want to change the points, I'm going to use set position since I want to reset the position. So we could like offset it. Let me do that in the 3D view. Uh, we could offset and move them all on the X, the Y, the Z. Uh, in particular, I want to make a little function, like a noisy function that says move them. Uh, relative to this random chaos. Now, uh, you might be tempted, since we already talked about randomization, to use this like random value, maybe in a vector, and connect it like that. And that's not like entirely wrong, <laughs> but you can see it creates this chaos. Uh, there's a kind of a continuous way we can do that. So instead of just having one point be here and then the point immediately next to it just on the other side of the screen, right? Uh, we're going to use a noise texture. And noises are used everywhere. Um, in randomization. So you can see um, it kind of looks like nothing has changed here, so I've connected this to the offset, but you can almost tell there's more connectivity. It doesn't look as chaotic. Uh, so what we need to do is kind of modify this to make it work for us. First thing to do is you can see everything almost looks like it's been brushed off to like the top left corner. Uh, this is because noise generates numbers between 0 and 1 for a vector for x, y, and z. Uh, I don't want that. I want it to not just go 0 to 1 in one direction. I want it to be able to go this direction or that direction. In other words, not 0 to 1, but negative to positive, if that almost makes sense. Let me just make a little graph. Right now, what we're saying is the noise says uh, for each point, either move it here or here or here. But the point is it's always going to the right. I want sometimes them to go to the left. So I want to have some like negative inputs here. Uh, don't worry about the specifics. Uh, what this translates to is you need to subtract this by 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5. And this kind of centers it. Because now we're not going from 0 to 1, but we're going from, we shifted it, negative 0.5 to 0.5. So it could go left or right. And as for how much it goes left or right, I want that to be smaller. So I'm going to take that and scale it, another vector operation. When this is 0, nothing changes. But when it's a very tiny number, you could see it's adding in our distortion. They're starting to look like droplets, uh, but they're not going so far that we get the chaos, right? So there's the idea. Uh, even better, uh, the, the reason we use noise texture is we can actually control uh, parameters in this noise texture. For example, how detailed is this? You can see it almost got crispier when I upped the detail. And in fact, we probably want a low detail for this because it's a, um, it's a water droplet. It's kind of like this blobular thing. Uh, but we can also control the, the scale of this, like how distorted each one is individually, or it could be like a low kind of beady looking thing. That's up to you. The roughness, you probably don't want to change too much. Um, but you could control the quality of this noise. And you, you just want to play with these numbers until they look correct to you. Uh, but you could see this is already looking tons better. And again, everything from before follows. Change the seed, and it's, it's going to keep working. But the main thing I would want you to hone in is the scale, the intensity of this effect. So I'm going to go for like 10% of what we had before, so 0.09. Or sorry, 90% remove 10%. So there we go. That's kind of an initial pass. Let's see what this looks like. So you can see we have this uh, metal can. 
uh, with droplets on it. Now, before we continue and add more droplets and make them look good, uh, let's first of all make sure they have the correct material and look like water. So. Uh, what we need to do is right now, this is just using a default white material. So we have this, 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 we set position. And now finally, we want to give it a material. So let's set material. This is the node we use to assign a material to the points. What I'm going to do is I'm going to assign not the can material, but this default material it seems to be using. What this means is if I now go to the shader editor and not go to the can material, but the, well, I guess that you, you see when I select this material, it almost like switches it. Maybe what we could do is for the can that we joined back in, remember we did all this and then we joined it back with the can, is we can set material for that geometry to the can. So that way it doesn't matter what we select. Um, but now in this uh, default material, which I'm going to call water, because that's what it is, uh, we need to make it look like water. So you can see now, uh, whatever we do to this, it translates to these because the water material is being, you know, uh, here's how you make it look like water. It's actually super simple. Take the transmission, in other words, how much you see through it, bring it up to one. And you can see this almost actually does it already. It makes it look glassy. Uh, second of all, take the roughness and bring it all the way down. So it's now they're, they're shiny see-through things. And um, another thing is you can almost see these look like disco balls. They're like very faceted. And this is because, you know, the geometry is very, you know, whatever. Um, so what I would recommend is let's actually shade smooth our... Um, so I'm distorting it, and then I'm shading smooth um, our droplets. So you can see now they're nice and smooth. And this is kind of like, like you could do a bit more, but this is kind of the essence of what makes it look like water. And I think it's pretty good. Um, extra things to make it look like water. This is technical, but the index of refraction, how much light bends when it enters water, the number happens to be 1.33333. Um, that's going to change it a little, but technically that's correct. And I think that's the essence of it. So now, uh, whether or not this looks good isn't because of the material, but it's because of the distribution. So, you know, some things we could do is, um, again, you know, like up the density, lower the density, but also change the original sphere that we put in. So maybe we want these droplets to be smaller on average. Up to you. Um, but now I'm going to add a second level of detail that I think is going to add a lot to this. So we kind of have our big droplets. In fact, you know, again, maybe they're too big, so I'm going to make the sphere smaller. I now want the second pass of like maybe less detail, just kind of like spherical droplets, but they're smaller and there's a lot more of them. Because if you look at a uh, the, the condensation of a can, it's not just these big droplets. There's like little water. There's different like levels of detail. So let's uh, modify that. Um, in other words, and we could uh, kind of copy a lot of this, but in other words, we want to make another distribution, right? So I'm going to use the geometry from before. So we're using the can to distribute points. Let's just view it like this. Um, I want to make another distribution, this one a lot denser. So I'm going to bring that up um, and it's going to be using a sphere uh, that is smaller and undistorted, right? So we have two different distributions going on here. So I'm just going to copy a lot of the stuff from here. So we want to instance on points. What do we want to instance? Well, I'm going to make another UV sphere. Um, the reason I'm not using this one is I want to control the radius here independently. So this one is going to have a very, very tiny radius. So you can see where we have like a sparse distribution. So here's the uh, first one the with the set position. Our distorted uh, droplets, and here's our dense droplets. And just like before, uh, we're going to use a random value to make sure they're not all the same size. So we're, again, we're just kind of reusing the same tricks from before. But we are, you know, making it a bit different. This one, I'm going to let it go from 0 to 1, so some of them can be super tiny. And uh, just like before, I want the distribution to follow the same rule set, where it can't be on the top or the bottom, uh, because that's not in my selection. So take the selection from before that led this dis distribution to do what it does and connect it here. And uh, that, that's kind of the essence of it. So now all we really have to do is for this to be part of our final thing and for it to inherit the water material and all this, is I just want to, um, so we have the distorted thing, so just remember how we came here. Um, I just want to join it right here, and then it shades smooth, then it applies the material, and it's kind of a done deal. So let's see. We can join geometry, join with these instances, and now you can see we have the second level of detail that uh, you can see it inherits the material. Um, so now really the question is, what are the numbers that look good? And that's kind of up to you. Um, in my opinion, you want a really high density of these small droplets. Nothing like crazy, but 
this is what makes it look uh, pretty realistic in my eyes. And again, like, you know, we need to do our lighting setup and everything more than just an HDRI. Uh, but you can see this is starting to look realistic, right? We have two levels of detail. And we can also change the average size of the small droplets. Maybe that's a bit too small. 0 0.027. And again, you could do the fancy thing with the Poisson disk distribution, but I think this is looking uh, pretty good. So now we have uh, two levels of detail. Now, if you want it to be very complicated, and you could, and I'm not going to do this in this tutorial, uh, you can kind of mitigate these like intersecting droplets where you have like one on top of another by turning it into a volume and then back to a mesh so they kind of connect like metaballs, like water would. You know, when two droplets are next to each other, they connect to form this like one bigger droplet. You could do that. Uh, I'm not going to do that for this tutorial because when you zoom out enough, and you're probably not going to go this far in, um, it looks pretty good. So now let's add kind of like the last uh, thing that I think makes this look really good, and this is back in the uh, shading. Uh, what we can do is it's basically like we have this metal, and then we slapped on this geometry nodes on top. Yes, it looks good, but it doesn't feel like it really connects with the thing. And this is because we just took metal and slapped this on top. The metal should also have some water stuff happening, condensation stuff happening to it. So how are we going to do this? For the can material, again, this is the one that's like making the metal, right? What I want to do is I also want to say, have some water reflective stuff going on. How do I want to do that? Well, remember we made this roughness map and what I could do is add more detail to this roughness map and have some areas be super reflective, roughness zero. In other words, they're wet. Um, how do I want to do that specifically? Here's a great trick. Uh, use Voronoi Texture. What Voronoi Texture is, it's basically a bunch of points scattered on our surface, almost like the geometry nodes, but it's in the material, so that when we make this big, you can see it's almost like this polka dot thing. And the trick is with this color ramp, I'm going to isolate a selection, so I'm, kinda, I'm going to kind of invert this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this black handle over here, and you can almost see it isolates these little white uh, circles. By the way, the stretching is because we're using generated coordinates, use object coordinates. You can see it almost generates these uh, circles because, you know, technically, if you know what Voronoi is, Voronoi texture is, it's, you know, a bunch of points distributed. So if we look at the distance, the radius, and then clamp it, that's what it's going to do. Uh, but the important thing to know is that we're getting free, almost free, like detail without too much work, right? We're just clamping a Voronoi texture. And what I want to say is for this polka dot thing, I want like each little polka dot to be like a, a more reflective watery thing. Okay, how do we do that? Well, we take the uh, roughness from before, and I'm going to say take this, and then subtract. So I'm using a math node. We are go going to subtract. What are we going to subtract? Uh, this color ramp. So you could almost see it's like the thing from before, but then we just kind of put some black dots on it. Again, it's black because we have white dots, which are value 1, and we subtract away 1. Maybe we should clamp that. Um, when we use this for our new roughness, so I, I know this was a lot of detail uh, that might have not made sense. When you actually use this for the roughness, what you're going to see is it's the metal, but now you have these kind of super reflective dots. And you can make them a little less, um, well, first of all, you can kind of control the scale of them. But you could kind of fade them with a bit of easing and stuff like that, and we can also control the uh, density of these. So do I want a lot of small ones or a couple big ones? That's up to you. And it's, it's again, something that is very tiny, but and when you zoom out, you don't necessarily see it, but subconsciously, it should add uh, some detail, right? Like, you, you can see it. You can literally see the dots, but it looks more uh, correct um, in my mind. So maybe what we want to do is just kind of add a lot of these. So I'm going to double the scale, but also make these dots a bit bigger. Let's see what that looks like. Yeah, so here, so just so you can see, here is, uh, here's without this uh, step. Again, I don't know if YouTube compression kind of destroys this, and here's with. Um, definitely on my screen, it looks a lot better. Um, okay, so I think final thing, so we, we have condensation. It looks good. Uh, final thing is I just want to add some controls, show you how to do that, and add a little extra flavor that isn't technically correct, but I think makes it look a lot better. So... First of all, for the controls, we already have a control on our geometry nodes to say, where's the selection, the vertex group? Uh, but I also want to control the seed values, because remember, the whole point of this is it's procedural. I want to pick new distributions and stuff uh, with a single number, not changing one seed here and another one here. So what we're going to do 
is uh, for the group input, we're going to connect it to the seed. Again, this adds another parameter. And I'm just going to connect it to anywhere I see a seed. So one here, one here. What else is randomized? Well, the um, random values that control the uh, scale, if you remember. So I want that to be randomized. And yes, it looks like nonsense, like this node network. But the good thing is we never have to look inside of it, which is the point, right? That's why we want to make these parameters. So I've connected the seed value to anything that can be randomized. And technically, what you could do is you can make this a noise texture four-dimensional. And this W slider can also be a seed value. I find that it doesn't really matter, because if we change where the droplets are, it's going to capture different parts of the noise. Uh, but you can do that. And the point is now we have the seed value that this one thing changes everything. The, the scale randomization, the distribution randomization, everything. And I think another thing that would be valuable is I want to control the density, but not just the density of the small droplets and the big droplets, but I want to control them together. So first of all, make sure you're happy with the ratio of droplets. So like, just pick something that looks good, something like this, let's say. And I want to be able to control the density um, proportionally. And you'll see what I mean by that. So what I mean is I'm going to use a math notes. I want one number to control both these densities, but one's way bigger than the other, and we want to account for that. So one of these is going to be a number. So I'm, I'm making it yet another parameter, and I'm going to set it to 1, and I'm going to multiply it by 150. So when this is set to 1, it doesn't change the density. So again, I want a, a slider here that you know proportionally does the thing. I'm going to add one there, and then another multiplication this one is set to 10, so I'm going to put that number, and then, whoops, and then uh, connect it. And then the idea here, why did I do this multiplication? Well, you can see when this is set to 1, it's as if nothing changed. But now when I bring this up, it uh, proportionally scales these up, if you can understand what that means. So you could have, like, when it's set to 0, or a negative number, no condensation, but then it's slowly adding it in. And you could see it inherits the material and all this, so you could almost control, you know, how much condensation there is and the randomization of that, um, et cetera. Um, okay, so we, we've added controllers, so we never have to look at this again, so let's not. Um, I just want to add, show you one extra trick that, again, is not physically correct, but I think it looks really good. So the droplets, I said, were done, right? We added the transmission. Let's go to the water. We added the transmission, the whatever, the re reflectivity. There is one extra thing that I think looks pretty cool. And that is using a Fresnel node, and this almost highlights the border of these. It has to do with view angle. I'm just going to make that higher contrast, so it's really only here. Uh, a little extra trick is what I do is I have the water emit light in this boundary. Again, water doesn't emit light. It's not correct, but I think it looks cool. So with this Fresnel connected to the emission uh, color, and you can see, well, I guess you, you can't see. So here's what it does, and here's without. So before, after. It's very subtle, but I think it makes it look really good. If I make it much more intense, you'll be able to tell. So you could almost see, you know, this is emitting way too much light, but it really highlights the water, and I think it makes it look good. So you set this to 1, and then maybe you also send this through a color ramp, and you pick a color instead of white. That's just a tiny bit blue. So again, not technically correct, but I like the look of it quite a lot. So maybe let's make that 50% the strength. Okay? A uh, final thing, this isn't really, you know, for the tutorial, but just so you know how I got my final render, is I just kind of put a plane, I just kind of made a very basic scene here. So this is now sitting on a plane, that plane is going to have some walls, E to extrude on the z-axis, control B to bevel, this is just how I set up some nice looking renders. I put it in this environment, uh, which is great because since this is metal and water, it's going to be reflecting and refracting uh, this background. You uh, create a material for this. You make it probably pretty black and uh, maybe low roughness, so it's reflecting the can. And then finally, for the camera, you go orthographic, because I think it looks cool. You put it there, and uh, you know, then you just set up your render. But you can see that's the essence of it. Again, the important thing here is the uh, controllers for the condensation, the seed, the density, and then finally, uh, the render. So let me just show you what the final result looks like. Uh, one more time. This is what it looks like. So really all I've done is I've just put a bit more work into the lighting. But you can see it's the exact same thing, right? We have a seed, we have a, a density, it's all exactly the same. So there you go. I think uh, now we've uh, mastered condensation. So uh, let's go back to the main screen. Uh, hopefully you learned something in this tutorial. I know it's been a hot minute since I've done a, a long form on CG Matter. I also do them on Default Cube. That's the uh, 
in the normal tutorial channel. But whatever. Hopefully you learned something uh, in this tutorial. And um, yeah, <laughs> I mean, th that's it. I have a Patreon if you want to check it out. There's a link in the description. Um, what you should know about the Patreon is it supports both this channel and the default cube channel. Um, but also, I feel like I'm selling this horribly. Uh, there, there's three tiers of things you get when you become a patron. Uh, you can get blend files like this one, so you don't need to make the condensation. You get access to all the blend files I made over the last three years. You get early access to tutorials if they're not sponsored. And also, you get uh, exclusive tutorials when I make them. I've been a bit lazy about that. But um, check, just check out the Patreon link in the description and uh, judge for yourself if you want to be part of it. But either way... Uh, hope you learned something. Go make that condensation and, uh, yeah. See ya.